forearm protocol for us is an AP and a lateral. If you're using CR, you're going to use a 10 by 12 cassette diagonal, so corner to corner, just to get the length on. If you're using the big digital cassette, you're just going to uh, put it close to midline. All right, 40 inch SID. Here are two technique examples, a CR technique versus a DR technique. AP forearm, the epicondyles up here at the elbow, they're parallel to the IR. You want the patient supinated, which remember, palm up. You're holding that cup of soup in your hand, right? Central ray for this one is easy, mid forearm. Your light field goes about to mid palm, maybe a little bit less here, and then up to the elbow joint to make sure you have both joints on. If you're using a 10 by 12 cassette, you're going to go kitty corner, corner to corner here. The big um, digital cassette, you can just go midline too. When you're evaluating it, you want to look and make sure you have both elbow joint in true AP position and wrist joint in true AP. There is a slight superposition of distal radial ulnar joint and then um, the humeral epicondyles are in profile. Lateral forearm. For lateral forearm, you want the elbow flexed at a 90 degree angle. You also need the shoulder elbow, wrist in the same plane. What does that mean? So ideally, they are touching the cassette together, right? The cassette or the table. You don't want the patient's shoulder way up high so that it comes down at an angle. So 90 degree bend, elbow in lateral position. Make sure wrist is also lateral. This is sometimes where my students fail their forearm comp because they put the wrist in a PA position instead of a lateral position. So raise the table up to a comfortable height for your patient. That way you can have it on the same plane. If you can't raise it, you can put cushions underneath the cassette to bring it up to same plane. What are you looking for? Ideally, the humeral epicondyles are superimposed. You have a nice lateral elbow. You have an open elbow joint space here. And the distal radius and ulna are superimposed as well. Elbow is flexed 90 degrees. So some facilities allow the palmated field to be diagonal. If you're using a CR cassette, you might be allowed to do that. Forearm rotation, just a reminder of supination, pronation, what it looks like. So if your x-ray does not look accurate, you may have your wrist in the wrong location. So it might be pronated instead of supinated. Trauma forearm. In trauma situations where the patient is obviously fractured, there's an obvious deformity, they may not be able to put their forearm into an AP position. So we may need to work around that. We may need to do a PA forearm. And that you can see here that the wrist is PA, but the elbow is lateral. We cannot, we might not be able to manipulate this patient to get both an APA wrist and an AP elbow due to their fracture. So what we would do is this PA shot, and then we would do a cross table lateral. You would build the part up on a sponge, put the cassette here, and shoot a horizontal beam to try and get a cross table lateral of the wrist area. Uh, we sometimes call this um, a dinner fork deformity or a swan appearance fracture. You might see one of these. This is an obvious deformity. This type of patient, you may not be able to rotate into an AP forearm. Green stick fractures. These are common in children. They almost look like partial fractures, right? They're not all the way through. Why? Because the kid's bones, they're so malleable, malleable and uh, kind of bendy, right? Know your anatomy, as always. Know your anatomy. Anatomy of your forearm. Mm -hmm. All right, back up with that.